Hi, I'm Eric Singer. I'm back, and today I want to talk about some interesting similarities between different unrelated accents in the English-speaking world. South. 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 Fish and chips. Fish and chips. We can define a vowel sound according to two pretty basic things. One is what the lips are doing, whether they're rounding forwards or not, and the other is where the tongue is in the mouth. And to pinpoint that, we use a map. We call it the vowel space. Looks like this. It's a quadrilateral. The front of the mouth, it's basically a person facing to the left like this, we're in a cross section. The front of the mouth is over here. Back of the mouth is over here. So let's talk about a feature I've talked a lot about before, goose fronting. Goose fronting, goose fronting, goose fronting. What is that exactly? I've said it means the goose vowel is pronounced further forward in the mouth, but what does that mean? So if the tongue is up like this, somewhere up in this area, and the lips are rounded forwards, we have an oo sound. You can probably feel that. Make an oo sound like a 19th century Shakespearean actor or a 1950s Noel Coward character saying you too. And breathe in some cold air over that tongue, you might be able to feel that it's arched up high in the back, right up here. Now, if that arch of the tongue moves forwards, and you get something that's arched up high, but closer to the front of the mouth, something like ü, then you've got goose fronting. And we can find this goose fronting in a lot of different places in the world. You hear goose fronting in Australia. Goose. In London. Goose. In Ireland. Goose. You hear it in the southern US a lot. Goose. You can hear it in California accents. Goose. And here, for your viewing and listening pleasure, a goose fronting medley. Goose. 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 Now let's talk about something called mouth raising. This is a feature that we might find in Australian accents. Mouth. London accents. Mouth. New York accents. Mouth. A lot of southern accents. Mouth. Mouth, in my own accent, starts down here, something like ah, and moves up here and rounds the lips a little bit, something like uh, ow. Oh. And you might be able to feel that in your own mouth if you imitate my mouth vowel. Mouth raising, then, would raise the starting point. So instead of being down around here, it's going to be a little bit higher. And going to go something like, ow. I'm not sure exactly which accent that was. They're all roughly similar, not exactly the same sound. But they're all going to start that mouth vowel from a little bit higher up. Here's a London version. South. Here's a New York version. South. Here's an Australian version. South. Here's a U.S. Southern version. South. And here they are all up against each other. South. 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 So in the kit set of words, words like ship and women and bid and mist, we have a phenomenon in New Zealand where the vowel sound, instead of being towards the front and pretty high, something like an i, it's going to move back towards the center, back towards the schwa, this uh sound. And that's why we had fish and chips as a way you might be able to tell an Australian from a New Zealander. Fish and chips. Fish and chips. In South Africa, we have something very similar. We have kit centering as well. The trick is it only happens on some of those kit words. Milk, myth. It's a little complicated, but if you follow that kit vowel with a g, or a k, a hard g or a k sound, that's actually going to keep it from centering. It's going to keep it up. So you get big or kick. Big kick. In other words, where you don't have one of those sounds following, it will also be centered like New Zealand. So but, cut. But, but. Fish and chips. Chips. So that's a weird, totally coincidental similarity between those two accents. Let's talk about a really similar start vowel in Boston accents and in Irish accents. Start, va. I'm trusting their hearts, their hearts. Instead of a start vowel uh, like mine that might be very much towards the back of the mouth, ar, right, it's followed by an r, but it starts back here, ah, this sort of low cupped area, we're going to have something that's much more fronted. We could call it start fronting. Uh, so we'll have a Boston accent that doesn't have that r sound. It's kind of just a vowel at the front, start. Here's a Boston speaker. Start. 
in a very pronounced Irish accent, we're going to get a really clear version of that exact same vowel sound. We are going to hear it with an R after it, but the vowel sound is still this front A, ah, start. Here's one of those. Trust in their heart, their heart. Start, fa. So hopefully now you know what the hell I'm talking about when I use terms like higher, lower, fronted, backed, centered. It's a map.